listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnishians out there in Gwinnett land and all of my friends around the world. It is a, let me tell y'all something, it is a hot day. It is 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and it is 83 degrees right now at 10 o'clock. It's going to go up to 90. It is already, I went out this morning, I was like, oh my God, it already feel hot. Yes, it is 83 already, y'all. Summer is almost here and we are feeling it right now. So anyway, it's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. Sunshiny, bright, hot day. And um, I listen, I hope your air conditions are working fine. We got to change the filters in mind so we can make sure it keeps running smooth because I can't stand to be hot. Last year it cunked out. You know, we got one of these smart systems and the system cunked out. And when I tell y'all it was, ooh, it was, it was excruciating for two days until the tech came out here to fix the air conditioner. I'm talking about it was hot. So right now, and let me tell y'all what happened. So what happened was some kind of way. So we got this smart system. If you can see me, I'm doing air quotes because it's supposed to be smart and it's just not smart at all. Because the way the system is set up, when the air condition is on downstairs, you will freeze upstairs. And when the, when the, when the air condition, when the heat is on downstairs, you will faint upstairs without the air or the heat even being on. So it's just you know, when the heat is on downstairs, you will pass out upstairs from heat exhaustion. Uh, heat, because it's so hot because heat rises to the top and it literally there's no way to block the heat off but what happened last year we had the air conditioner on and it was not getting hot it was not getting cold come to find out it was getting so cold where the air, the system was it was it was ice it was just a big hunk of ice blocking the, the 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 air compressor from opening up or something because it was frozen and so the guy had to actually melt the ice off the air thing and he was like uh i can come back in a couple days i said sir you're gonna have to melt that ice today it is 100 degrees in my house right now it, it, the, the thermostat said 100 i was like there is no way in the world i'm gonna I'm sleep in this house for another couple of days because you don't want to go up there because it's really hot because he didn't want to go up there because it was really hot so he had to go upstairs in the attic where the, where the air conditioning system is and he was like not trying to do it. Now he could have done it. He was, he was trying to come back in a couple of days. I was like, nah, you gonna have to fix that today, bro. It, it's a hundred degrees in here right now. You somebody sleep like this for another couple of days so you can come back and do the same thing you can do right now. Absolutely not. So he had, he was like, well, I'm gonna tell you, it's going to get hotter. I was like, listen, sir, it's already a hundred degrees. I, I'm going to leave while you go up in the attic and turn that heat thing on so you can melt that ice so I can have some air conditioning. It, it was hot y'all. So I said all that to say, check your seat, check, listen, check your uh, HVAC system, make sure everything is good because it's going to be a hot summer today. It is 10 10 o'clock. It is 83 degrees already. I want to give a shout out to my friends around the world. I got a five star um, review yesterday for this show and someone said they love the show even though they don't live in, now they don't even live in the state of Georgia or Gwinnett County. So listen, my love, my appreciation goes out to all of you who are listening. I really love doing this show and I really love this space. That's why I get up every day and I do it. Well, not every day because I'll be off tomorrow, but I get up four days a week and I do this show because I love doing it. It makes me want to get up. And I that's why at the end of each show, I do this word of inspiration because whatever you're doing in life, you want to get up and do that thing. So I thank you guys for listening. Thanks to you for showing me the love. Thank you for the five stars. I really appreciate that. And that's the second five star I got this week. I was like, wait a minute. I got another one? So you mean to tell me people really are listening to me? So we got five stars on our um on our, our Wise Women Invest Wednesday show. And I was telling my co-host who we did that show. So if you missed that show, it'll be up today because I, I forgot to put it up yesterday. But it, it goes live. You, if you go to LinkedIn or if you go to Facebook under Noise Media, you'll see the show from yesterday. And we talk about investing on there. And um and I was telling her because we had took a hiatus for a second because we were doing it on Wednesday nights, which I got to go change out the outros because it say Wednesday night. And I was telling her, I was like, hey, we got a five-star rating over on Apple Podcasts, and we haven't done a show in probably about four or five months. And so thank you all for always listening and supporting. And, you know, just to know that my people are listening around the world, I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you again. 
I just want to show y'all some love for showing me love. And so, when, you know, it's kind of funny because I'm not one of those people who are big on likes and, sh and things like that. But when I get a five star, I get excited. Like, so thank you. I thank you for, you know, having two shows that have, that have gotten five stars in the same week. So I'm excited about this. So thank you again. All right, let's get on with the show. Today is June the 2nd, baby. Listen, it's Thursday, June the 2nd. It's also National Bubba Day. Now, here's the thing. I don't know what that means. I don't know what National Bubba Day means. Somebody put that on the calendar. But it's National Bubba Day. Um, Bubba, like Uncle Bubba. Like I had a, my uncle. One of my uncles' name was Uncle Bubba. Uncle Bubba was the sweetest person ever. Like, he helped my mom raise my brother and I when she got a divorce. And he never had children. So I was kind of, we were kind of like his kids. And so he was just the absolute sweetest person. Um, that's one of the things I, you know, makes me at ease when I think about my mom not being here. Is that I know she's up in heaven with all of the great people that I love up there. And they all together just having the good old time. So Uncle Bubba was her second oldest brother. So anyway, happy, happy National Bubba Day, Uncle Bubba. Um, his name was Eddie, but we call him Uncle Bubba. It's also National Rocky Road Day. I never like Rocky Road ice cream. So those of you who like it, knock yourself out. Not one of my favorites. I'm not a big ice cream person per se. Like I love Sundays, but I don't know. I think I haven't eaten a Sunday probably in two years. Ice cream Sunday. I used to eat them all the time, but I found out I would eat them when I was depressed. Not even depressed, when I was stressed. So and my mom used to know I was stressed because she's like, you eating ice cream? Because that's the only time I would eat ice cream. And she would know I'm eating it because I'm stressed out about something. I haven't eaten that in, in a few years now. And really, I haven't. And I used to love it. Just ice cream and walnuts, though. Just not a lot. Not a whole gallon of ice cream. I would eat like a, a little tiny bowl of ice cream. It had more nuts, had more walnuts on it than anything. Because I love nuts. So it would be a bowl of, uh, a small bowl of ice cream with a lot of nuts and a little bit of chocolate. I don't like a lot of sweets. So I couldn't put all that chocolate on top of the ice cream and make me sick. Make me feel horrible, y'all. Like I just get nauseous and I start sweating. It's a mess. Um, I did that when I was in Florida last week. So I had a, I got to tell you, I'm going to get on with the show. But anyway, we were in Florida. We were at Friday's eating with me and, and, and my, 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 my friends. We all went to pot fest together and, um, we were in Friday's eating. So I had the, I had the two sliders and I had a sweet tea and I had the, the Jack Daniel sauce, the, the, the glaze that they give you for the sliders. I didn't think anything about it. So I had the sweet tea. And then I had the I had the, the, the sliders and I kinda dipped the slider a little bit in the inside of the, the Jack Daniels sauce. They gave you the little tiny cup. So I didn't think nothing else about it. After I ate like one slider and drank some tea and dipped in the jack, I was sick as a dog. Like I was like, Oh God. Because something in there it was something that they sweetened that stuff with, it made me so sick. So it's I'm starting to think that it's the it's the liquid syrup, like sugar syrup when they put it in stuff, because something makes me really, really sick. And that happened to me the week before last. I was at a I was at the sushi restaurant, me and Georgette. Same thing. I've eaten there before, but I don't think I've ever eaten the sushi and drank the sweet tea with the with the ill sauce. Because the ill sauce is kind of sweet. So I had tea. And here's the thing, I never drink my, 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 my full glass of tea ever. Anybody that knows me know that I'm gonna drink maybe half a glass of tea. Now I love tea. I drink it all day long. The only time I drink close to a full cup is when I have my hot tea in the morning. So I had the ill sauce, which is kind of sweet. And then I had the tea. Well, when I tell you sick as a dog, and I know it was the two things together, but I didn't, I never know what's going to make me feel sick until it makes me feel sick. I seriously had to sit in the bathroom for like 15 minutes with like tissue stuck to my head because I was so hot and I thought I was just going to just, just Earl. And I, you know, I just had to sit there and like, okay, I can't go back out because I don't want to throw up at the table and people are trying to eat. So I'm just going to sit here in the bathroom until it passes, and it normally passes. It passes like after about ten minutes, but this one was bad. And I'm like, I told Georgia, I haven't been that bad in about three years. So I said all that to say, I don't do a lot of sweets. All right, it's also National Rotisserie Chicken Day. So if you like rotisserie chicken, sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not because it's not seasoned enough. But you know, you can season your own. National Leave the Office Early Day. Now, here's the thing, y'all. I know y'all want to leave the office, but remember, you still got to go back there tomorrow or Monday. So if you leave the office early, you might want to make sure you get permission. Don't just up and leave the office, and then next thing you know, um, you're out of a job. All right? I'm just saying. So this is June. This June is National Outdoors Month, so get outside. Go to a beautiful park. 
you know, visit some people, you know, just get it, taking the, the, the beautiful skies. Like I go out in the morning time and I look outside and I see how beautiful it is. This morning I went, I was like, Ooh, it's hot. It is hot. So it's, you know, it's all hot. All right. This is also national pride month. Yep. National pride month, June 1st through the, through the 30th, the whole month of June is national pride. So shout out to all my LGBTQ community. Y'all celebrate like y'all do. Cause you know, y'all know how to celebrate. Yeah. Y'all know. So national pride day is celebrated the entire month of June. The month holds honors the, um, 1969 Stonewall uprising in Manhattan, which was five days of riots after police raided the Stonewall Inn that became a watershed moment for, for gay rights. So it's National Pride Month as well. So shout out to everybody. Him, her, she, him, all of that. Him, he, what is it? He, him, she, her. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you identify as, whatever. Shout out to you. Enjoy your month, baby. Enjoy your month. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. All right, now, let's go ahead and get on with this show. Before I do that, though, I want to give a happy birthday shout-out to my Uncle David. His birthday is Sunday, June 5th. He doesn't know we're going to take him out to Top Golf on Sunday. Um, so half of us will stay back to kind of put together him a little surprise party. The other half is going to take him out for the day so we can bring him back and surprise him. He wants to go to Top Golf. He's been telling my uncle he wants to, my, my brother, he wants to go to Top Golf. So we're going to surprise him and take him to Top Golf while the other group stay behind and make a, you know, get the little party together for his birthday. Um, because, you know, he, um, he, that's something he wants to do. And I, and we want to, we want to make sure we make it happen for him. So, uh, we're going to, I'm wishing him a happy early birthday because, you know, today is my Friday. Yes, I know it's Thursday, but it's my Friday. And I want to, uh, give him a happy birthday shout out. So that's my mother. My brother, my mother has, had six brothers and he is her second baby brother and so he lives with me when i moved back to georgia they all he came with me my mom came with me my daughter my husband and my stepdaughter my niece and then my daughter had the baby so it was like a house full of us and so he's still with me and i try to do my best to make sure he's good and so one of the things he wants to do is go play golf um and my brother and i are gonna take him while the rest of them kind of stay behind and you know create a little barbecue for his birthday so happy birthday, Uncle David, ahead of time. All right, let's get on with these Harvest Girls brought to you by Noted Astrology, Mike Thompson for today, Thursday, June the 2nd. We're going to kick it off like we always do, and that is with Aries. You will meet new romantic partners if you get involved in seminars or travel. You will find it easy to talk about your feelings today. Don't hesitate to find out what your mate's intentions are. Opportunities to make advancement through good business sense are apparent. All right, you got a lot of good stuff going on today. You're going to meet some new romantic partners. Uh, if you get involved in seminars or travel, check you out. Um, you, uh, you'll you find it easy to talk about your feelings today. Woo, that's going to be a good one because I got an Aries and he don't never talk about his feelings. So if you're going to find it easy today, bro, listen, your girl going to listen. If, if, if my Aries going to talk about his feelings, I'm going to sit down and shut my mouth and just listen. I am. Try not to say nothing. I'm try not to say nothing. You know, fish, we, it's hard for us fish. It's hard for us fish sometimes not to say nothing. But today I'm going to do it. If my Aries is going to talk, I'm going to shut my mouth. Um, don't hesitate to find out what your mate's intentions are. Okay, listen, you be vocal today, Aries. Stand up for what you believe in and find out what's happening. And you're going to do some good things at work. So you're going to make some advancements. All oh, good for you today, baby. Yes. Taurus. Travel opportunities may be taken advantage of. Okay. You are best to do something energetic with friends instead. Business partnerships to turn out quite lucrative. Look at you. All right. Listen, you're going to have some good time with your friends. Yes. And your business opportunities are going to be great and lucrative. Yes. And you got some opportunities to travel that you got to take advantage of. Look at you, Taurus, having fun today. Yes. I hear you. Gemini. You would not be able to trust someone you work with. Uh-oh. Watch your back, Gemini. They smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place. Them backstabbers. Backstabbers. I know I'm messing up the OJ song, but I have to say that part when I see that. Whenever I get a horoscope like that, I have to sing that. Because sometimes you just got to watch your back. Don't let siblings put pressure on you. You need to spend some time pampering yourself, Gemini. Listen, you do for everybody else. Do something for yourself. Go get your nails done. Go get your hair did. Go get your go get your toes done. Get a massage. Take care of yourself. Because, listen, you only got one you. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm learning that. I am learning that. You hear what I'm saying? Cancer. Residential moves should be considered carefully. You should feel a little more stable about your position. However, don't be surprised if a job offer comes your way. 
Your best efforts will come through hard work. All right, listen, just when you was like, ah, I'm good right here. This great job offer come your way. What you going to do, cancer? What you going to do now? Yes, because now you got to figure that thing out. You've been saying, you know, I want something better. Then you felt you got really comfortable where you are. And then this great opportunity comes your way. What will you do? That's Jeopardy, right? What you going to do, Cancer? Now you got a couple of opportunities. Listen, that's what happens. Listen, I'm in rare form this today. Just in case you haven't noticed yet, that's what happens when I get a lot of rest. I'm in rare form. Plus, I got a lot of good things happening, so I'm excited. I'm smiling. You can see my face right now. I have I have this big smile because I got great things happening with, with Good Morning with Net, Noise Podcast Network, everything, everything. I got some great things, and I'll tell you about it as I roll them out, so I'll probably start talking next week. Leo, don't let others take advantage of your good nature. Do something constructive outside. Social gatherings be, will be conducive to meeting new potential mates. All right, you got to go out. It's 83 degrees, Leo. Go have breakfast somewhere. Go sit in the park. Find a social gathering. You want to meet a new potential mate? You got to get out the house. You got to get from behind the computer. You got to get from behind the mic. You got to get from behind the mop. You got to get from behind the broom. You got to get off the bed. You got to go outside and socialize. Get outside. Meet somebody. You want that mate? He's not going to knock on your door. She's not going to knock on your door. You got to get out. Virgo. Face any emotional problems head on to avoid situations getting out of hand. Loss is evident if you don't consider all the angles. Your high energy should be spent pleasing your mate. Okay, look at you. Got to please your mate with all that energy today, Virgo. Okay, now. That high energy you got. All right, please them. Do what you got to do. Otherwise, somebody else is going to please them. The clean up woman and Jody, they just, they're just they just waiting for you to drop the, drop the ball. So you do what you got to do, baby. Yes. All right, listen, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after this song to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noted the Shroud and Micah Thighs. And stay tuned. We get down to the beat, y'all. We get down, down to the beat, y'all. We get down to the beat, y'all. It's like we're not going anywhere. Maybe it's because there's something in the
Mac. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, bringing you the daily horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Michael Thyssen. We're going to pick it up with Libra. Work dil diligently and you will get ahead today. Use your high energy and dynamic approach to win favors from superiors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should get into programs that will enhance your appearance and help you be the best you, you can be. All right, that sounds good. That's that's me in the gym trying to get it right, trying to get get it right, get it tight. It was so funny. One of my friends, she she looks amazing already, right? And and so she's always saying, I got to lose some weight. She looks amazing. Like, if you saw her, you'd be like, oh, what's wrong with her? That's what I said. But here's what I learned. Long time ago, there was a woman I used to work when I used to work at Prudential. And she had the whitest teeth I had ever seen in my life. Her teeth were, like, sparkling white. And she was always, there was always a problem with them. And I said to her, so, and so, so she was telling me about, she was about to get these porcelain, um, Fillings, right? So, so her whole teeth could look one color, which I like. Later, I was like, "Well, who's gonna be inside your mouth?" That's what I said then, right? And what I quickly learned was that when, even though what we see looks great to us, unless that person feels great about who they are, that is them. So, and so I'm looking at my friend, going, "Well, you look amazing. Like, what's wrong with you?" Because I, I can see, and somebody may say the same thing about me, which I doubt it, but because I know I need to leave. Like, I probably, I probably. Could, I probably could, I probably could lose a hundred a hundred pounds and look like a I would look like a crackhead though if I lost a hundred pounds. So that's not even my goal. My goal is to be like in a solid size twelve. I'm right around sixteen, eighteen right now. So that's my goal. So I learned that even though people may look perfect to you until they feel like they look perfect to themselves, it doesn't matter what you say. Cause I you know, people could say things to me and I'm like, Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Um, but that's not the best me I could be. I, you know, size 12, yeah. Now, to some people, size 12 is huge. To me, it's perfect. So, yeah, do what you got to do to feel good about who you are. That's all I'm saying. Because that, then that's different for everybody. Like, when I met that woman, her teeth was so... I'm talking about white, white, y'all. That's because she had, like, these beautiful veneers. And then she had... She needed some fillings. And she was going to get some porcelain fillings. So, it'll match the white, white, white veneers. And she used to always, but she would always say like, my teeth, my teeth. I'm like, what is wrong with your teeth? So, you know, whatever it is for you. I mean, sometimes people go overboard and that's just, that's, that's what we see on the outside looking in. Um, for them, it's not. So be the best you, you can be whatever that is for yourself. I can't even judge on that. Cause I'm always trying to lose 45 pounds. I've been losing 45 pounds. It was 35. Now it's 45. Cause I think I gained 10 during the pandemic. As a matter of fact, I gained 15 during the pandemic. So I had 20, then that went up to, no, I had 30 pounds, and then that went up to that pandemic 15, so now I'm at 45 pounds, which will put me right around my perfect 12 and a little bit over in the 14 section. And I know for somebody, they say, oh my God, that is huge, but not for me. You know, for me, that's my perfect size, because I feel like I won't look like a crackhead, because I've never been small. Like, I've never been smaller than a 12, ever. I don't think I was smaller than a 12 when I was 12. Ha! <laughs> Really, I don't. You know, and my mom told me, I asked my mom one time, I said, when did I start gaining weight? She said, when I was about four years old. And so right around that time, she and my dad started having major problems. And they had them all the way for the rest of my life until they got a divorce when I was 10. So by that time, I was probably a size 12, at 12, or at 10. So anyway, that's my story. I ain't going to take y'all down that whole memory lane of sadness, even though my mom was the best mom ever. Scorpio. Problems with your partner could be reaching high level, a high level of concern. Your involvement in sports or entertainment will lead to new romances. Those you live with may be experiencing problems. All right, listen, Scorpio, I'm going to talk about that for a second. Pay attention to the people that are around you because if they're experiencing something, you want to be able to try to help, at least try to help. A lot of times people suffer in silence and they, they, they don't have to, but they don't know that they can come to you. So just pay attention. If you notice people acting a little bit odd, a little bit different, you know, ask questions. How you doing? What's up? You have been kind of quiet lately. Been kind of off to yourself lately. Ask the question. I know we're busy. We're busy trying to live our lives. But sometimes you got to pay attention to the people around you and ask the question. Because you asking that question could be a matter of life and death for you, for them, and for those around them. I'm just saying. All right? All right. Don't be so caught up in yourself. Pay attention to, to the people you love. Sagittarius, catch up on correspondence. Try to keep yourself, keep to yourself, work diligently on domestic chores and responsibilities. Don't jump as quickly as you usually do. Slow down, Sag. I know you want to jump out there, but slow down. Don't jump like you usually do because something you need to see first. So slow your roll, baby. Slow your roll. 
Capricorn, you will have excellent ideas for changing or renovating your home. Rel relatives may play an important role in social activities. Broaden your horizon and look at the programs that will teach you awareness and relaxation. Yeah, I know you want to meditate. Meditation is hard. I be trying. I don't know about you guys, but I've tried to meditate so many times. It's just not easy for me. I can, but you know what? This med this meditation guy told me. He said, "Audrey," because I said to him, "the the the only time I can be really still and really quiet is when I first wake up in the morning." He said, "That's your meditation." I said, "Oh, if that's all it is, I'm good then." But if I got to stop and then get real quiet, yeah, that doesn't work because I could stop for a second. And get real quiet for a second. And by the time that second is 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 quiet, something is popping in my head. You gotta do this, you gotta do gotta write this note, gotta do this. Note. That doesn't work. But early in the morning, when it's really quiet, now I can tell you this. Whenever I'm brushing my teeth and the water is running, or I'm in the shower, I get really, really good ideas. Cause I'm quiet in there too. But that's when a whole lot of good ideas and clarity moments come to me. So maybe that's my meditation. Anyway. If you struggle like me, let somebody teach you how to do it. That's all I'm saying. Broaden your horizon and look into programs that teach you how teach you awareness and relaxation. Um, yep, I was relaxed yesterday. That's why I'm talking so much with so much energy today, and I'm cracking jokes. That's when you can tell I had a really good night's sleep because I'm I'm in rare form the next day, like today. Aquarius, don't gamble unless you can afford to lose. That's why they call it gambling. They don't call it winning. They call it gambling. All right. Try to address the real issues in order to turn things around. New romantic relationships will develop through group activities related to sports events. Okay, look at you. Let me tell you something. Go to a Braves game. Yeah, you want some new? That's why all the that's why all the men are. But, but listen, guys, I see a lot of girls going to those games alone. I've been to some Braves games this year, which I which I absolutely I absolutely love going in person. Like the city watching on TV, not so much. In person, I actually like it a lot, actually. I'm cheering and everything for the Braves. I'm like, yeah, this is nice. But I said all that to say, when I go to the games, I see a lot of girls that are by themselves, and then I see a lot of guys that are by themselves. So if you are looking for a new romantic relationship, check out a sporting event. Now, that being said, uh, you, there some of the tickets are really cheap, and some of them are really not so cheap. The thing about that is, what I've learned is that you don't have to sit in your seat. So as long as you can get inside the stadium, you can be anywhere. You can't sit in other folks' seat, but you didn't got to sit in your seat. You can be in the hallway. You can watch from the sidelines. It's just really cool, not the sidelines, because the sidelines, you got good seats. But you can be like in the hallway where they have like the food and stuff and kind of congregate out there. They have TVs around. So even if your your tickets are for the nosebleed seat, which mine are not, they're really, really good seat. We're right, right behind third base. Really, really nice. We have our own concierge when we're there. They run up and down the stairs and get us stuff. I feel so important when I'm at the Braves game. I was like, this is amazing. Um, it really is. And that's what makes the, the game so fun for me. Plus, I don't like day games because it's too hot. So the games that I've gone to so far have been night games. I think the year we went before that, we were up in the 755 Club, which was Hank Aaron's club up at the, at the stadium before they moved over to SunTrust. And I was like, I said to my husband, oh, yeah, see, I love this. I ain't got to be in the heat. And it was a day game, and it was hot. But we stayed in the club and watched the games from the club window as we wait, as we ate foot-long hot dogs. So I love it. Anyway, if you want to meet somebody new, find a sporting event that you like. Dudes hang out at sporting events. And dudes, ladies hang out at sporting events. Because I go to all my nephew football games. I'm, I'm not married. I mean, I'm not single. But I'm just saying, there are a lot of women at those games supporting the, supporting the kids. I'm just saying. Don't sleep on the games now. You want to be, listen. I I used, to, I used to tell people go to Home Depot if you want to find a man, and go to a grocery store if you want to find a woman. Go to a sporting event if you want to find anybody, because that's where they are. I'm just trying to help somebody out. All right. Last but not least, my fellow fish Pisces, property investments, insurance, taxes, or inheritance inheritances should bring you financial gains. All right. Let's look at us, fish. The money's on the way. This would not be the best day for communication or travel. Really? I feel like I'm doing a great job right now. That's because I got a lot of energy. Passion will be on will be your only answer. Passion? Listen, passion is always my answer. It's the only answer today. Well, it's always listen, I'm passionate about what I do. I'm passionate about my family and friends. That's normally always my answer. But today, fish, that's gonna be our only answer. Now, the only answer to what is the question? I don't know. But that's going to be the only answer. On the flip side of that, we got some money coming, baby. Yes, we accept all money 
in an easy and relaxed manner, in a healthy and positive way for the highest good of all. All the money that's flowing to the flowing to us today, I'm speaking for all my fish. All the money that's flowing to us today, we accept open-handedly and with a grateful heart in an easy and relaxed manner, in a healthy and positive way for the highest good of all. All right, that's all I got for you today on the horoscope side. I'll be back again on Monday. God willing to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Micah Thyssen. <sighs> now let's get on with some news you can use. So I normally do not like to start the show off with this type of news, but again, I have to send my condolences out to the people who lost their lives yesterday in the Tulsa, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma shooting. That is so sad again. Ooh, I don't know what's going on, but anyway, four people were killed yesterday in a shooting at a hospital campus over in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I I just don't know. What... <sighs> it's just sad. So my condolences go out to the family and the loved ones of those who lost their lives in that in that shooting. Don't know why this person was, was went over there and decided he wanted to shoot up people at a hospital. Nonetheless, you know, I don't know. Um, but again, my, my condolences goes out to all of the families. I mean, I just, it's just getting out of hand, y'all. It's getting out of hand. It's out of hand. I just out of hand. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, I just wanted to say that my condolences and prayers. I don't know who was shot. I didn't even watch the news. It came across so much. So because I do this show, I have all kind of news apps on my phone. And so CNN is one of the apps that I have on my phone. And CNN pops up news every time something happened. CNN pops it right up on my phone. And so I saw it, and I was in the middle of a meeting. I just couldn't even look at it. I was like, I don't even want to see it because it breaks my heart every time I see these things. And, you know, I just think about people just, you know, you get up to go to work. You get up to go to school. You get up to go to the grocery store. And you don't even know if you're going to come back. And that's the sad part. Like, I, I remember you can just go anywhere and fill up. You can't even drive down the street. My daughter was telling me about, a, like, a 17-year-old girl. She was a passenger in a car. And some kind of way, she got it, the, the driver did something to get enrolled with Rage with another driver and with a lady. This was a lady. And 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 the, and, the, and, the, and I guess the lady threw the finger up at the driver and the, the passenger girl threw the finger up at her and she shot her. 17 years old, she shot the girl in road rage. And I'm like, are you kidding? So you can't go in... Stay in your house. But who wants to do that? Speaking of staying in your house, now I heard we got monkeypox. What the is monkeypox? I'm like, what is that? Oh, my God. Woo. Listen. Listen. So now there is a suspected case of monkeypox in Georgia. Yep. Yep. A Metro Atlanta man has confirmed. No, not, not a suspected. A Metro Atlanta man has a confirmed case of monkeypox. It was confirmed yesterday. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. What is monkeypox, y'all? It sounds disgusting. Anyway, apparently, the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, is now testing to confirm if the disease is monkeypox. He was, he was, he was, um, he was, he, he was confirmed with ortho pox virus. The ortho, 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 ortho pox virus. Now they're just trying to test him to see if it's mon- monkeypox. Monkeypox is one form of orthovirus, the ortho pox virus. The others include variola, which is which is a cause which causes smallpox. You know, ooh, child. Let me tell you, monkeypox. Monkeypox is a viral disease that causes skin to break out in pustulas. Um, it was first detected in a laboratory monkeys and then discovered in humans in 1970. Now you know what that say to me right there. Here's what that say to me. That say to me that in that laboratory they put it in the monkeys. That's what that says to me. It was it was first discovered in laboratory monkeys and then in humans. That sounds like to me they put it in the laboratory monkeys. That's what I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway, monkeypox typically starts with a fever, lymph nodes, swelling, muscle pains. Um, then it progresses to a skin rash that has these pustulas and it lasts, it could last two to four weeks. Can you imagine walking around two to four weeks with blisters all over your body? When I was a little girl, I used to do that. Not on my body, but on my legs. My legs are so scarred up. Every summer, every summer, I used to break out on my legs with these little blisters. My, my, my mom said I had something called infotigo. But my legs would break out every summer. And that's because I'm highly allergic to mosquito bites. So I'm, I was in Georgia growing up. So in Georgia, it's mosquitoes everywhere. And it was back then, we didn't have all the paved streets and all that kind of stuff. We had a lot of trees, a lot of dirt. 
And every year, without fail in the summertime, I would have this breakout on my legs with these big old, they look like monkey pox. Because I've seen what monkey pox look like. I have, I have scars on my foot right now. I have a scar right on the front of my, like right before with my foot and my ankle meet, there's a scar. It's about the size of a quarter. Because I had a blister there when I was a little girl and the scar stood there. But I used to, my legs are scarred up. Like they like, they're not super scarred up now. But when I was little, every year, my, I looked like a mummy for about two weeks out of the year because my grandmother would put like these, you know, we didn't go to the doctor back then because your grandmother had the remedy. You hear what I'm saying? Your grandmother had the remedy for everything. My grandmother would mix this yellow stuff up in this little, little, little cap. It looked like a, it looked like a, you know, like if you got a, uh, the, the cap off the milk bottle. Okay. So the cap off the, like a, like a gallon of milk. So if you take the cap off of that, she had this little thing and I could see it vividly y'all. And I was a little girl cause my grandmother passed when I was like eight. So I was a little girl, but I could vividly see her mixing up this salve with this yellow powder. And then she put it on my, on my blisters and then she wrapped me in and she would cut up a white sheet and then she would wrap me up. So for like two weeks in the summertime, I looked like a mummy. And then after that, I would heal up. So, yes, I, I I can kind of imagine what that looks like, but it wasn't all over my body. So, monkeypox, you know, they saying it's kind of like all over. Anyway, the current outbreak is, is unusual because at least 270, 257 confirmed cases have been identified in 23 countries, um, where it's not typically found. So, that is, that's interesting. Oh, I know everybody's wondering... Cause you know, when this stuff happened, we get a family, we got a family text going on. So everybody starts sending text messages like, Hey, as soon as they confirmed that it was, they had a, a suspected case of monkeypox in Atlanta. My aunt sent the text message out to the family. Hey, they said monkeypox is in Atlanta. Here's how you get it. And everybody goes, Oh Lord. So this is not family text. So every morning we got a family text that, that goes out to everybody. And it's like, good morning. We love you. Have a great day. It's a sunshiny day. All that. That's what goes in the text. But my aunt got this monkeypox story and everybody was kind of like in, in doing what they were doing. And I kind of hit like, oh Lord, monkeypox. So anyway, um, just be careful while you're out there. Um, monkeypox can be transmitted among people through direct contact with sores or bodily fluids. Intimate contact, respiratory secretions, prolonged face-to-face -face contact, according to the CDC. So anytime you see anybody, listen, I hate to say this, y'all, but if you see anybody with a blister, back away. Just back away. Don't stand up talking to them. So, I, if, if, so if I walk up on you and I see you a little swole, I'm going to back up. So don't feel, listen, don't you feel any kind of way. Just know that that's why I'm doing it. I'm just, because I need, and if you, if, I, if you walk up on me and you see any kind of little blisters going on in me, you need to back away. I'm just saying. So listen, if you're out and about and you see people, don't be all up in folks' face. Face-to-face -face contact. Standing there talking for hours face-to-face. -face. Put your mask back on. Respiratory secretion. Put your mask back on. You hear what I'm saying? Woo, child. That just give me a pause, a cause to pause right there, baby. Yes. All right, I'm going to a song because that was some heavy news. I done told you about the gun shooting and monkey pox. And, ooh, I'm going to a song. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. <laughs> Cause I only love me Don't get 
back, welcome back. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you the daily rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. Now, listen here. There has been a new ordinance that, had, that has been passed, and if you're not careful, it could cost you up to $50, right? So you want to make sure. So here's the thing. So the Gwinnett Commissioner, um, they, they passed a new ordinance, and so you cannot smoke in certain areas. Um, there, that means that vaping and smoking is prohibited in certain areas. So the county brought in prohibitions on smoking and vaping, and here's the thing. So a new ordin ordinance uh, brought in the smoking uh, prohib Ooh, prohibitions in Gwinnett County will take effect later this month after the county commission last week unanim unanimously approved it. Now, you want to know the details. Here are the details because I don't want you to be somewhere and you just get caught up out there and then you're going to get this big old fine and then you could probably get a bigger fine as time goes on. So smoking and vaping are now banned in outdoors arenas amphitheaters in Gwinnett County as well as outdoor public transportation stations. The ban extends to outdoor common areas of multi-unit residential facilities except in designated smoking areas that must be at least 15 feet away from entrances, windows, or ventilation systems. So, you cannot smoke outside in, in, in arenas, stadiums, or amphitheaters. So, you know we got beautiful amphitheaters here. We got beautiful, like the lawn. We got the Grayson up there. You know, you cannot smoke there. You can't vape or smoke there. I didn't even think you could smell vaping. So, I can't imagine why they would ban vaping. Th does vaping smell? I didn't think it did. But anyway, that says no vaping, no smoking at those facilities. And if you, people who violate that ordinance can be fined up to $50. People who own or operate public places and spaces that violate ordinances can be fined up to $100 for the first offense, $200 for the second offense within a year, and $500 for each additional violation within a year. So guess what? I'm telling you right now, if you have a restaurant and people outside your door smoking, yeah, you got you, you run the risk of getting those fines. So you might want to let people know. Now, what's crazy about that is, you know, there are people who smoke, they could barely go a second without smoking. So unless you're in your own private residence somewhere, um, how are you going to live? I mean, I just, I don't know how that's going to work out for some people. You, I guess you got to go find a designated smoking area, right? Yeah, I can, I can imagine that being really hectic for people who smoke because um, I know people who can't go a second without smoking a cigarette. It's like, I'm like, did you just put a cigarette out? And they, they're smoking and firing up another cigarette. So now you can't do that. So um, at any time... You know, if you get caught smoking like that, you can you can get a fine depending on where you are. Inside of your home, you know, there's not a problem. Inside of smoking areas that per permit smoking, that's not a problem. But if you're smoking and 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 it's not in one of those designated areas, yeah, you could you could get a, you can get a fine for that. And if you got a, if you are a a restaurant owner or some kind of facility owner. You can get even a bigger fine. So anyway, the new the new ordinance take place on take effect June the twenty third. So just know, yeah, it's called the Smoke Free Air Ordinance. Smoke Free Air Ordinance is going to take effect on June twenty third. So get yourself together. Get you some. Listen, go get you some of that gum to help you stop smoking, so you don't get them fines. And if I was a restaurant or something like that, I probably have gum at the counter. Like, look, I know y'all want to smoke right after you eat. You want to smoke right after the game. You can't smoke in public places. At the game, your team just lost or your team just won. You want to celebrate. You want to smoke. If I were you, I'd be handing out gum. I would buy gum to help my folks. Here's, take this nicotine patch. They can be handing out patches. That's medicine. But I'm just saying that gum. I think the gum needs a prescription too. But now nah, I think you can get the gum over the counter. Listen, hand out some nicotine gum. That's all I'm saying. Help them folks out because they're going to they get fined. You know, them people that can't, they got to smoke every time they breathe. Like, they take a breath and then they take a puff. That person, give them some gum. Help them out. I'm just trying to help you out, to help them out. I know, I'm being a fool right now, right? I know, I know I am. I know I'm being a fool. Anyway, it's the time for the kids that are out of school right now. And they got internships coming up. So, um, Gwinnett High School students from all over the district are getting, uh, getting, are getting to apply for local summer jobs while getting advice from professionals. Yep, so these kids are ready to do their things. They're ready to get some jobs. They're ready to, to, to do some internships. That's all cool too, right? You know, get, be, getting the opportunity to be an intern allows you the opportunity for you, for the kids to get a, a real look at whether or not they want to do this kind of job or not. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times... um. 
we listen it had somebody told me i could do an internship when i was younger i did summer jobs and my summer jobs actually led me to to learn, to learn about clerical positions right because after my first summer work and i worked in a park it was hot and dusty and i was like yep that's the end of that for me because i don't like being hot or dusty and so i was like yeah park job is not good for me so my next year i worked at a at a mental health agency and that's when i started to learn about office skills and things like that so for the rest of my adult life when i was employed I worked somewhere where there's a computer um that was that was because of my summer job so I guess it was almost like an internship except I got paid so some internships give these young people the opportunity to kind of dip their toe into these different career options and let and let them figure out whether they want to do that or not you know I knew for a fact that I didn't want to work in the park so I definitely not a, as much as I love looking at grass and land I don't want to work out there it's too hot I, y'all hear me say that all the time because it's hot, you know, so I didn't want to do that. But um, later I learned that if I knew how to use a computer, I could definitely work behind a desk, which I did for most of my most of my adult life when I was an employer employee. I worked behind a desk. So, you know, internship opportunities are out there. I'm looking to probably hire an intern too this summer since I'm definitely going to be moving into the office next week. Yeah, I've been I've been in this house since since the pandemic. Uh, you know, I opened up the studio right at the height of the right, like I opened up this, the studio in January 2020, right? I did my ribbon cutting February 2020. By March 2020, my office, my studio was closed because of the pandemic because everything shut, the world shut down. And I think it opened back up in May and I just was not ready to go back because I was paranoid. So I didn't go back. So I, everything I had put into the studio, I packed up and moved out in a day because I was like, okay, this is crazy. I'm scared and I'm not going in there. So I've been in my house, in my home studio since uh, since March, 2020, which is over two years now, God, that time flew by, but now I'm ready to get back into the office. So I have a new studio partner, um, and a new office. So I got to go in and decorate my office and get myself together. And I'm kind of spoiled though. So anyway, time to get back at it. Time to get back at it. All right. So there is a dapper mentorship program teaches minority students to be the best version of themselves. How about that? I love it. I love it. You want them to be the best version of themselves, right? You want them to be the best version of who they can be. Anyway, um, Dapper Mentorship Program was introduced to to young men in Shiloh High School at the beginning of the school year. Say, we partner with Gwinnett County Schools Community Based Membership Program and Shiloh High School is one of our partners. Um, Filer, who is Filer, Filer, Filer who serves as the program's executive director. We do weekly sessions with high school age males and we teach them elements of leadership, etiquette, discipline. Um, we've been able to do this um, this past year and it's been a great experience. So they're teaching these young guys how to look dapper, how to be leaders, all of the good stuff. They need to be great young men out there doing great work like the young men that are training them. I think that's amazing too um, because we need that. We need them to understand that you know, you have to be the best version of yourself. A lot of times there's not a lot of, of attention around young men, especially young black men. I could tell y'all a quick story and, and, and I won't stay long because I'm going to close the show out. But when I was living in Jersey, my one of my godsons at the time, he was 19 years old. And so he was going through some stuff. You know, he was young. He was trying to figure out his life. He was trying to figure things out and he was having a rough time. And so he didn't have like a strong, strong male figure in his life. So my friend and I, she was, she's one of my best friends. I, I consider myself very lucky. I have four best friends. Um, uh, she's one of my best friends and, and she, we were looking for a, a program for him at the age of 19. We couldn't find one program, not one. If you had turned 18, you had, so between from up to eight, up to 17 years old, there was something they could do for you past 17, 18 on up. You were on your own that he had, he had aged out of all the programs for young boys and he was struggling and we couldn't find anything to help him. So the fact that we have these programs, um, that help young men to, 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 to be a better version of themselves is amazing. So I think what they're doing is great. I think it's really needed. And I think that there's a, I think there still may be a group of young men who, who probably still needs his help up to the age of 25. Because trust me, I've seen some 25 year olds and he's like, what the heck are you doing? Because they just don't have that guidance. They don't have anybody to talk to. And believe it or not, um, people think that once you turn 18, you're grown. You're not, you're still a kid. For some people, you're still a kid at 25. So young men, you know, they say that they need a little bit more help because women mature quicker. And that may be the case. But I think when you have organizations like Made for Bigger, 
um, who are there to help these young men, that's a great thing. So made for bigger. If you have a young man who needs some help and they're trying to figure out them lot their lives and there's no real male figure in their life doing anything that's amazing that they can see, check out www.madeforbigger.org. Madeforbigger.org. Um, and that way you can, you can, you know, they can get some, some guidance, some mentorship that they probably really need. Okay. I want to give a shout out to this clothing company. I think this is a pretty cool story. You know, I love entrepreneurs. I really, really do. I love entrepreneurs, y'all. Podcasts is an entrepreneur. They're my friends. They're my friends. They're my friends. Anyway, After 12 Fashion is the newest chic women's clothing boutique that has opened in Loganville. The store carries dresses, jumpsuits, graphic tees, activewear, swimwear, denim hats, and accessories and more. This is the this is the brainchild of Tawanda Jones. Um, she said after she lost her job in July as a registered nurse, she felt God telling her to take the leap of faith and move her online store into a brick and mortar. Um, which assistant with assistance from her husband who owns his own business called Sports Helmets. Okay, check you out, Smart Sports Helmets. I like that sports with a Z on the end. Jones started the lengthy process of opening after 12 fashions in the community while still managing the online store. So the store is located at 4044 Atlanta Highway, Suite 804. The shop sits um, in the North Logan Commons, Commons Plaza along National Retailers TJ Maxx, Big Sporting Goods Store, and more. Look at you, girl. You ain't go small either. You went over there with the big boys that I hear you. Anyway, congratulations to opening up your story. Hey, you need to join the Greater East Side Chamber. So if, you, if you're listening to this, come on over to Greater East Side Chamber, and I, I'm going to tell the chamber about you as well. Um, I, wish he, I wish I had known about this earlier. But anyway, I love entrepreneurship. Listen, being an entrepreneur is about taking a leap, leap of faith. And, and and walking in that faith and walking by faith. You know what I'm saying? Walking by faith, walking in faith. That's what it's about. So congratulations after 12 Fashions. I w- wish you much um, success on your new venture. And I'm going to tell the Great East Side Chamber to stop by and pay you a visit. And maybe we can come and do a ribbon cutting for you. All right? All right, listen. You want to come out and do some movies on the, on the lawn this weekend? Yes, 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 yes. Um, the Luther's having... Um, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., food truck lineup. They got the food truck lineup going on. The first flicks on bricks of the season is going to be this Friday in Duluth. They're going to be watching Spider-Man, No Way Home. Uh-oh, I might go see that Friday night. I like that. Anyway, Duluth on the Green is pretty cool. Um, So anyway, if you want to go out this weekend, food trucks are going to be there. Watch some watch some movie. Have a good time. And that's going to be this coming, um, this coming Friday. Yeah, 6 to 9, downtown Duluth. Right, and the movie they're gonna be watching is Spider Man No Way Home, and the movie's gonna start at eight o'clock. So, what how is that gonna work out? So, the food truck's gonna be there at six to nine, and then the movie starts at eight. So, I guess they want you to have your food in your seat by then. Yeah, main stage live music is gonna be by G Clef and the playlist, and that's gonna be uh, D- at Desert Alley six, six to eight. No, six to nine on main stage is gonna see six to eight, Desert Alley six to nine, free face painting, all the good stuff. Oh, that's why I love Bike Gwinnett County, y'all. I'm telling y'all, if you can't find them doing Georgia, well, let me say this. If you can't find anything to do in Metro Georgia, you are just a boring person. My mother used to say that all the time because there is a lot to do, especially in the summertime. So I don't know what the weather's going to be like tomorrow, but you can go out there and watch Spider-Man at 8 o'clock. No Way Home starts at 8 o'clock on the town green in Duluth. Flicks on the bricks, baby. Flicks on the bricks. All right, I'm going to my last song. Then I'm going to come back and give you my word of inspiration for the day before I close it out. Stay tuned.
back, welcome back. So listen, guys, that's all I got for you today. And I got I got a wise word from a wise person who said it. Here goes. It says, don't, be, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. All right, I'm going to say that one more time because it missed somebody. It missed somebody. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Dr. Seuss said that. And Dr. Seuss was right. Listen, I know, I know. That's a wise person, Dr. Seuss. Listen, don't cry because it happened, right? And I know that's easier said than done a lot of times, but smile because it happened, right? Because here's the thing. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Because for somebody, it didn't happen. Let me just say that again. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Because, because for somebody, it did not happen. Think about that for a minute. Think about that for a second. Uh, uh, think on it all weekend. Just smile. Here's, here's my challenge for you today. Smile. Think of that thing that you're like, man, I can't believe that happened. Smile, though. Because it did happen. And guess what? You made it through. Whatever it was, it happened and you made it through. You still came through that thing. So smile because it happened. All right, all right. So all I got for you today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last hour with me, and I love and appreciate you for that. Listen, I'll be back again on Monday at 10 a.m. God willing. You stay safe out there. If you miss any episode of this show, be sure to go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to past episodes there. And also, do me a favor and download the app from the App Store. Whether you got an Android phone or an Apple phone, Good Morning Gwinnett is in your App Store. So download the app for me, y'all. I'll be back again Monday at 10 a.m. God willing. Stay safe out there. Listen, if you see somebody with blisters, run. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, 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 run. No, for real. Get away from them because we don't know if that's monkey pox or not, but we don't want to take a chance. We don't need no more pandemics breaking out. I want to have a good summer. How about you? I'll be back again Monday. Y'all stay safe out there. Love you guys for listening. Until next time, my friends. Until next time. Make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.